started Thermal in the early 80s, uh, mostly doing custom exhaust work, performance work. And then towards the uh, late 80s, we started manufacturing uh, for inventory, mostly when the Sport Compact market came alive. And ever since then, we just expanded into the manufacturing uh, capabilities and performance exhaust products. We're located in Southern California in Lancaster. We have 30 employees and have a 16,000 foot square building. Our product is built out of 304 stainless. At Thermal Research and Development, we're very proud of our U.S. manufacturing. The fact that we can do our product in-house gives us full control from start to finish of, of the end product that we're taking out to the public. When we first decide to take on a project, we bring the car in and we evaluate it. We evaluate it for space and for routing, uh, for chambers that we can install in the car. We then rough in an exhaust system, and, and at this point we go with just the basics of the exhaust system with minimal sound control on it. We then fit the car with microphones to really fine tune what it sounds like out on the road. I think right in there is what we want to deal with at 135 hertz level. We can go ahead and wipe that out and bring them down to peak of the rest. Uh, we'll get rid of that sound. Once we have that, we then come back with, the, with that mapping that we've done and we start on the computer with chambers that are going to go in and target those sounds. So we have sound absorbing, which takes a lot of the, the high rasp out of it. We have sound reflection, which helps stabilize the overall note. And then the big thing that I think at Thermal we have the most control over is the drones. The most effective way we go after that is with sound canceling, which is also called a Hemholtz chamber. A sound canceling chamber or a Hemholtz chamber is a way of sending an exhaust note back to bounce back against itself and cancel it out. It's a very effective passive exhaust uh, process of canceling the sound because it doesn't create distortion and it doesn't create any back pressure. Well, once we rough in an exhaust system and we take it out on the road with our microphones, what we're looking for is the, is the sounds that we want to get rid of. Once we dial in the Hertz level, which is a sound wave that's giving us the problem, we can go to another program and develop the actual chamber that we need. And when you think of it, you're not really looking at the Hemholtz chamber to, to bring the exhaust or the gases in and filter them. It's just a sounding board. It takes that sound wave in and it bounces back against itself and it just makes it dormant or it wipes it out completely. So we test it out and we put it on a graph and that allows us to actually see the Hertz levels that are giving us trouble. We then design the chambers that we want to have to go in and attack the high points that we see. Then we can take those math equations and show them on a graph to show how much decibel loss we're going to lose in a certain Hertz range then we can really target in getting the sound where we want. And that's what we see on this, is right in a specific hertz range, how much decibel loss we're going to end up having when we, when we make these changes to the exhaust system, finishing up with a final product. The shape of the chamber is not that crucial. It's more of the volume of it. So you can see them round, you can see them square, you can see them on a lot of our vehicles where it's a, it's an internal chamber. So then it looks like just a regular standard muffler, but the process is the same. It's still doing the same thing. A lot of vehicles now are coming from the factory with what's considered active sound technology. So you have valves or moving devices in it to change the, the flow and the exhaust pattern of the sound. This type of active sound control in most cases has to be replicated in aftermarket exhaust systems because it's dialed into the check engine light. 
So in our exhaust systems, whenever that came with it, we are adding the active technology back into the exhaust system, but at a higher flow rate for our horsepower and torque increases. You know, one of the keys with the performance exhaust system is getting the exhaust away from the combustion chambers rapidly to take the pressure off the motor to release more horsepower and more torque. So it is a misconception that, that you, when you build a bigger, more aggressive system, you have to deal with any sound that comes down the pipe. With the right technology, you can curve that sound and create the exact note that you want. So yes, you do have a more aggressive exhaust system, but it doesn't mean you have to develop an exhaust system that, that you have to downshift the car to get the notes away or your wife won't drive in it or, or you can't start it up before seven in the morning because your neighbors will throw a fit. You can have it all as long as you know how to, how to build that.